Imagine growing up where this is your classroom. These are your friends. And this is your playground. My name is Allison Teal, and I was raised around the world, homeschooled by my adventure photographer parents. Now I'm kind of like a female Indiana Jones with a pink surfboard. I travel the world documenting the mystery and intrigue of the incredible cultures I grew up in through a film series I created, Allison's Adventures. In each film, I team up with a local companion for a wild and comedic adventure to share their secrets of survival, sustainability, and happiness. And then one day, I got a call from Discovery Channel to be on the most challenging survival show in the history of television. They said I'd be marooned on an island for 21 days with nothing. And I only had a week to transform from surfer girl to survivor. For some of us, camping is about as rustic as we're gonna get. Maybe you've even gone glamping. Have you heard of that? But what if you didn't have shoes or clothes or even a tent? That is the premise behind the Discovery Channel's latest hit, Naked and Afraid. A man, a woman, alone, without clothes, in the wild, finding food, shelter, really just trying not to die. And yep, I agreed to the challenge. Welcome to Home Sweet Grass Shack. Papa. What's happening? I just got a call from Discovery Channel. Rewind. Let me introduce you to my fam. That's my mom, Deborah. She's a world-renowned yoga teacher and a wise naturalist. For some reason, I felt like yoga was gonna save the world. Put a flower up behind your ear and um, sing a song and enjoy life. She can find a natural cure to just about anything. And my papa, he's a pioneer in green living and a photographer. I always wanted to be an explorer and adventurer, and that's pretty much what my life's been about. So we were always on the move, wherever his wild photo expeditions took us. I wanted to bring a child into the world that had more of a connectedness to the, um, to the earth and to other cultures. We've been the three adventurers for as long as I can remember. Hey guys, I'm here with my family. Hi, hi, hi there. In between adventures, we built our Swiss Family Robinson off the grid home, entirely by hand, with no electricity and no running water. Every morning, I'd put on my work clothes and help Papa build our home. Allison used to walk around and have to give her a hammer and nails and set her loose so she'd pretend to be helping me build the house. <laughs> Hale Kai, or Ocean House, is still our base camp. And we still do pretty much everything together. So they were the first people I told when I got my package from Discovery Channel. They sent me this, and they told me that my locations is the Maldives, and that there's a camera in here. Oh, sweet, it's oh, a wow. GoPro. And I'm gonna have to document everything on this until I leave next week. Lights, camera, go. I got to work quickly, pestering my parents for any advice on the four keys to survival. Shelter, water, fire, and food. I can't find the right kind of board that's soft enough to make the fire stick work. Can you eat any of these? Mm -hmm. so. My parents are a wealth of knowledge and in constant motion, whether it's around the yard or around the world. So I had to multitask and take advantage of every moment. Mommy, when are you coming back? I needed to be ready in mind, body, and soul. There. All I keep thinking about is chocolate. Okay, but lift your hips up. There, this arm up over your head. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Papa! Finally. My Survivor Pro Papa advised the best way to prepare was to go into the Hawaii wilderness and try surviving alone. Hey, How long do you think I should go for? At least three days. Trying to figure out what to eat, what to catch, what to cook, and go from there. I had to think about it. Back when I was a kid, I'd always come to the ruins of this old Hawaiian church to play Indiana Jones. I could be anyone I wanted to be, but could I be a survivor? I mean, I've never taken a real survival course in my life. I've been in third world countries and been sick from Hepatitis, dinghy fever dinghy or fever. something like that. And just for doing a TV show, it could affect the rest of your life. It could affect everything about your life. My papa was right. I would need to go off and give it a try, all alone in the Hawaii wilderness, for a few days with nothing, but not naked, yet. 
Thanks to my days as a hula dancer, I whipped up a coconut shell bra and a tea leaf skirt and set off alone into a remote valley. I had been there once before, a while back, so I was pretty sure I could handle this. Just as I reached the valley floor, a massive storm hit. The valley began to flood. I knew I needed shelter to keep from getting hypothermic, even in a tropical climate. So I gathered anything I could find and made a sort of rough shack. I'm just gonna have to try to wait this out. The storm was not letting up. And then darkness settled over the valley. I shivered through the night and woke up trapped in the valley. I went along the river that had formed to look for any sign of food. Coconuts! It's amazing how a tiny victory in survival can mean the world. But without a sharp tool or much energy left, I spent hours trying to get the darn thing open. The storm was still raging, and it was almost nightfall before I finally got it open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only to find out that it was rotten and completely inedible. If I couldn't survive a couple days, how was I gonna survive 21? When I made it home, Mom? My parents were nowhere to be found. There was a note on the table stating that they had to leave early for their annual adventure in Peru. Just remember, you were born naked and survived us as parents. What was I going to do without them to help me prep? I'm going to die. Time was running out, and I didn't know if I'd be ready. If I wasn't properly prepared, this could affect the rest of my life. I love living in nature, but suffering in nature for a TV show didn't seem worth it. At times like this, my mom usually tells me to take a deep breath, and if it's meant to be, there will be a sign. And then I saw Fisherman Tony. Uncle Tony has been my neighbor since birth. He's a man of few words, but very wise. If anybody could survive something like this, it would be him. So I told him about my predicament. He's crazy. He can always make me smile. <laughs> Have you ever tried to survive with nothing for a month? Tony is a native Hawaiian fisherman, and he told me, no worries, Wahine. I teach you what you need to know about fish. So this is the tuna's cousin, but not the tuna. The ocean will never let you go hungry if you know what to look for. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch anything this big though. Tony took me further down the coast and pulled out a vana, otherwise known as a sea urchin. They're dangerous little buggers. One time I stepped on one and I couldn't walk for a month. Within a few seconds, Tony rubbed off all the poisonous spines, cracked it open, and told me to eat it. Well, if I'm, if it has a face, I don't eat it. And you see those tentacles? I was raised a vegetarian, but if I was really gonna do this, I'd have to be able to eat anything. Still alive. Oh, Tony! <laughs> you believe in me, Uncle Tony? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uncle Tony saves the day. The universe has a funny way of providing if you simply ask. I may have been home alone, but you know, I wasn't alone on the island. I still had a few days left, and there's only four main components to survival. Shelter, water, fire, and food. So I had an idea. My plan of attack? Return to my Tarzan child, Hawaiian roots. So I set off to visit one of the kahunas I grew up with, Charlie Grace, who still lives traditionally. Charlie is the man who would know anything and everything about ancient Hawaiian everything. The first thing I, I thought to myself but didn't tell her, she out of her mind. I had a few things I needed to learn. And she wanted to learn ropes. Basket. She wanted to learn a whole bag of things. 
First, he took me around and showed me all the tropical plants that would aid in my survival. Oh, he stressed the importance of the coconut tree as the tree of life and how to make traditional Hawaiian shelters. Then he taught me about bone and shell fish hooks and fishing line made out of coconut husk. Yeah, you got it. It's still a great challenge, but can be done. Now I was on a roll. <laughs> and knew exactly who I needed to meet up with next. So I'm heading over to meet Coconut Pete right now. Coconut Pete is the master of everything coconut. And I wasn't surprised to find him up in a coconut tree. Oh, the coconut is revered in Hawaii as the tree of life. And it's the only tree that can provide you with food, clothes, water, and shelter. So it's a very important tree and I just really love it a lot. He was the first one to teach me the coconut hat, back in the good old days. He said first I had to brush up on my coconut hat weaving. You're gonna go over. Over, under, just like surfing. Little did I know this would be my true lifesaver during the challenge. You're gonna do great out there in the real world, girl. The real world. Number one priority in survival is shelter, and the number one shelter is clothing. Then he shared with me his simple method for opening a coconut. <gasps> a bit easier than my method in the valley. That is serious skill. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. oh, I could live off that for a month. We had to make sure that our hats would survive the elements. So we went out to catch a wave. And Coconut Pete took a liking to my goat. Shelter, check. Water, check. Food, check. But a hat wasn't gonna keep me warm in a storm. So fire was now my number one priority. I needed to master fire by friction with sticks. But not just any sticks. Sticks you might find on a tropical island. But try as I might, I could not get a flame. I couldn't tackle this one on my own. Back in the day, a man named Ina helped us build our house. He's a professional fire dancer. I bet he could teach me fire by friction. I showed up and she was <laughs> stressed out of her mind. <laughs> but I didn't get the answer I was hoping for. I've been away from my island for quite some time, many years. And so my fire making skills wasn't as sharp. But Ina never lets anyone down. So he taught me an alternative method for keeping warm. One coconut sleepy yeah, bag. One coconut sleepy bag. It was a bit of a brain twist, but finally I got the hang of it. I needed all the insulation I could get. She's gonna survive just fine. <laughs> but not without fire. The human body can only survive four days without water. And if there were no coconuts on the island, I would need fire to boil water and purify it. But I'm not giving up. Ina and I tried to make fire with a bow drill. Okay. I almost had it. You see, it was smoking at yeah, the end yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you hey, get a little it, pull and it, it sits right there. We were so close, and I was so frustrated. We tried all through the night with no luck. First thing the next morning, I went to the only place I could find answers. As Ocean Luck would have it, I got to talking to this girl in the lineup about my survival challenge. She turned out to be a pro survivalist and had just survived on the coast of British Columbia for over a year in a rowboat with nothing but a cat. I first thought, when she paddled up to me in the lineup, I first thought, wow, this girl's either totally crazy or she's got some hidden skills that I don't know about. And I thought, for her sake, please have a bit of both. In between sets, I kept pestering her about fire making. You know how to make fire? Yeah. Oh, shit! And thus, us two survivalists set off into the unknown of someone's backyard. We gathered all the necessary well, elements to make a proper tropical bow drill. From the branch, 
Keave. Mickey was stoked to show me some of her secret fire making survival tips. Smoking. Survival really isn't about your skills that you know. It's all in your mind. There you go. <laughs> Thank goodness. Just in time for my last sunset. I was so excited, and I've learned the only way to truly master something is to teach others. So I gave Ina a holler, and in exchange for my coconut blanket lesson, I taught him how to make fire with a bow drill. I suddenly realized my entire life had been preparation for this challenge. Everybody is who they are. We, all we could do is expose Alice to the things we felt were important in the world. From the day I was born to the time I tasted my first coconut, Homeschooling off the grid was essentially 24-7 Survival 101. Everything we did was school, and it was a huge leap of faith. Nobody wrote the books, at least none that we knew of. People thought we were nuts with what we are doing. You know, you're crazy raising a daughter this way. But thank goodness they did. I look at all the little girls that I keep seeing at the stores with their pink tutus and their fairy wands, and I go, right on. It doesn't matter that you teach them to survive in the sense of wilderness. It's that you teach them to be themselves. We are just teachers to a point, but the world's the teacher. I'm forever grateful for my Hawaii family who believed in me and made me believe in myself. It's a big deal, you know, being naked on an island that you've never been to for that long. Many will walk away. They fall down, they're not gonna wanna stand up. I knew she was gonna be so tough, but I knew there was gonna be moments that it was gonna be a life-changing experience for her. Everyone has to get back to their roots, whatever that may be. What amazes me about Allison is the interest that she has to live that way. People call it the planet. I say it's a canoe. Because in order to survive on a canoe, we know we have to take care of the canoe. We also need to take care of each other. I hope you survive. <laughs> Thanks to this week, I discovered the fifth and most important element in the sacred order of survival. Shelter, water, fire, food, and a sense of humor. They can take my clothes, but they can't take my smile. I'm joined now by Allison Teal from Hawaii. Aloha, Aloha to you. Allison and Jonathan, welcome to the show. Uh, there's a new season of Naked and Afraid. Have you seen this show? Yeah, how much did you all get for doing this? <laughs> was it, it wasn't a uh, competition. A coconut. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun show. 